Hey, everybody. This is Chris DiFurio with Keys to the Shop. Welcome to another edition of Shift Break. Uh, this episode is brought to you by the people who are taking the pain out of doing your inventory, your ordering in your cafe, and that is Odeco. When you run a cafe, good inventory management is one of the main levers that you use to drive good business results. It has to be done, and it has to be done well. And if we're honest, it sometimes, if not a lot of times, can be a pain. Odeco is here to help. Odeco uses artificial intelligence to put your sales data to work. Uh, they couple past sales with uh, local weather and events, uh, put it all together to predict exactly what you're going to need in the future. Uh, at that stage, their virtual purchasing agent then automatically places orders based on those predictions. It's automated, centralized, optimized ordering for your cafe. Again, taking the pain out of this process and increasing the accuracy of it too. So it saves you a lot of money and time. In fact, Odeco has helped their partners cut waste by 50%, reduce food costs by 9%, and save about two to five hours in administrative time per week. So uh, this is a win-win. I would encourage you to go try it out for yourself. You can try it out by visiting this link, odeco.com backslash keys to the shop. Again, that's odeco.com backslash keys to the shop. Try it out in your cafe and take the pain out of ordering in inventory. Okay, so today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about being the point of clarity in your cafe. And uh, those of you who are managers, especially, this one is for you because you are constantly looked to as the point of clarity uh, for whatever it might be. Even if it's not in your job description, if there's a question, if there's a concern, and we don't have time to deal with it, or we don't know, we're just going to ask the manager. And that can be really great because then you have the opportunity to reinforce standards. You have the opportunity to create um, consistency across the board because people are asking and not just assuming. Um, there's some great things here, but also it can be kind of frustrating because um, we all in our different positions want to know where the borders of our job lie. And I think one of the main things that I want to get across here today is that being the point of clarity is kind of the uh, job description that's inherent within management. As soon as you take on the mantle of being the person in the cafe, that's going to be what you do primarily. Now, um, you can set up structures for people to ask specific types of questions. You can build expectations of your staff by letting them know that, you know, we're going to have like one-on-ones, for example, where you can ask a lot of different questions. And if you have regular meetings like that, then you'll cut down on the amount of questions that people ask you on the fly as you're trying to get change for the drawer or, you know, hurry up and get to a meeting and somebody catches you in the middle of, you know, going from A to B. This is just the life of a manager, but you can kind of make your own bed to sleep in here in terms of how you uh, dole out your communication. And um, when it comes to being the point of clarity, you're not always going to have the answer. You're going to have the opportunity here to clarify for people existing standards. You can also be the point of clarity in how you uh, accept and embrace that there isn't clarity in a certain in a certain area, and then take ownership of bringing clarity to it by starting the exploration process. So somebody asks you a policy about uh, dogs in the cafe, for example, and your cafe doesn't have a policy on it, then you can just say, that's a great question. We actually don't have a policy on that. And I'll find out. We'll talk about it. And now you've kind of got your marching orders in that a, a gap in communication or policy has been exposed and you have the opportunity to fill it. And once you do, that will be the referenced standard until it's either um, you know, updated or undone or whatever. But all that to say, you don't have to have the answer right away. In fact, I would avoid having the answer right away if it's not crystal clear or something that's been well thought out. Um, you could be tempted to just make a standard right in the middle of your talk with somebody, but that's just going to cause confusion because you're less likely in that moment, because it's not so um, you know purpose driven, <laughs> to um, just communicate it to that person and not at, and not really say to everybody else, "Hey, by the way, we just made a decision on the fly today that 
you know, fill in the blank. We're not going to allow outside food or beverages. We're not going to allow dogs in the cafe. Um, the new standard for uh, refills is this. Um, when you're in a position where you can be frustrated at the barrage of questions, it's tempting to want to give these kind of flip answers and then expect it to sort of matriculate through the system and then be frustrated later on when it doesn't. So now I want to recommend to you a previous Shift Break episode called Communicate, Duplicate, Repeat. It's talking about um, distributing information, bringing clarity through how you distribute information. But um, today I want to kind of go back to the idea that you can't try to offload this responsibility of being the touch point of clarity. You as a manager are looked to as a touch point for tons of different things. And one of the worst things that can happen is that you try to avoid giving people clarity or you conflate giving clarity as uh, always having the answer. Um, people need to be told that answers don't always exist to their questions. Uh, people need to be told that coffee shops are constantly changing entities, as are the people within them. And so the cultures and how they intersect and the needs of the business day to day, they do change. And so we're trying to navigate what um, our standards are as we grow, and we do that together. And so that kind of a communication to a barista that's asking a manager about you know what's going on lets them know um, the reality, first of all, the context uh, and reality that the manager is operating within, that when they disappear out of the cafe into a meeting, that that is just not the you know Shangri-La where everything is magically clear and everything is all of a sudden muddy when you get in the cafe. I think it's easy for baristas to assume that everybody knows the why behind the what. And we're all just trying to figure this out together. Um, and we do it better when we accept that clarity is a process. And uh, you as a manager represent that process to the baristas. And uh, yeah, you know, you're going to have standards that you need to enforce. And that part of being the point of clarity is very easy to do, um, if not maybe a little bit um, repetitive sometimes, but, you know, that's part of the job. Hey, remember, we do this, mo this amount of uh, chocolate sauce in the lattes. Hey, remember, uh, this is where we put the recycling now, um, et cetera. So the actions I would recommend for you, if you find yourself in the position of management and there's a lot of questions that are involved and sometimes you don't know how to handle them is, first of all, um, take a look at how you're handling the already existing standards in your cafe. The episode uh, Communicate, Duplicate, Repeat is a good one. That's linked in the show notes here. Um, that would help you in your processes, making sure that information is communicated thoroughly and not just from the hip in the moment because you want to just get rid of those questions and go on with your day. Um, the next action I would say is to um, examine yourself to see if you have some uh, negative emotions about receiving feedback from staff or receiving questions and communications. And if you do, I would take some time to really think through um, management and, you know, the idea of, of being in that position, Th this is kind of what the position is about. It's one of the core tenets of management is to be a point of clarity, which just means questions and uh, coming up with solutions for problems that are in the cafe. If this is not something that you think you can overcome, then you might want to find another place to be in the cafe. And I don't mean that to sound harsh, but the questions aren't going to stop. Um, it's how you perceive them and how you handle them that really makes a difference. And I wish that uh, all of us could, and myself included, view questions and opportunities for clarification as gifts instead of curses. Because once more, they are opportunities to bring clarity, to reinforce standards, to build rapport, uh, they are opportunities for building something great in the cafe. Being a point of clarity, in my opinion, is one of the best parts of being a manager. And if you're not getting a lot of questions from people, um, but you know that there should be more questions, maybe it's time for you to start asking questions. Being a question asker is also a part of being a point of clarity because not everybody is going to feel comfortable communicating their concerns. They just want to uh, go along to get along. 
if you're a manager and there aren't questions being asked, but you, again, you know that uh, things aren't being followed the way they should be and people are assuming answers and assuming wrongly, then I, I, you need to start asking questions and generating a culture where people are uh, actively communicating these types of questions rather than holding them in to themselves. And so I hope that this episode has been helpful for you. There's some recommended episodes that go along with this theme in the show notes, so I'd encourage you to listen to those. Thank you very much again, and I will see you next week for another edition of Shift Break from Keys to the Shop.